Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. <clears throat> In this video, I'm going to be doing a, a, a do-it-yourself video and DIY video to bring you up to date on these Kessel lights. This is the Asta 120. They now cost about $107 to $137 a piece. I opened up the two that went bad on me. Well, basically what it is, is you have the uh, 60 watt and 20. Let's say if you have 60 watt and there's 20 LEDs, that would be three watts an LED. And what you do, what I did is I went on the cob and looked at the LEDs. I uh, turned around and made a voltage of about 2.8 volts and checked out the LED. And what it is, the LED is out. Now, uh, once the LED is out, it does not work. So the circuit board was good. Everything was good. On both of these that went out, one of the LEDs went out. Now, that's usually an indication if everything looks good on your circuit board and wiring and stuff. LED is not turned black. That gives you an indication that the manufacturer is using cheap LEDs. And you'll see this in cheap LED light bulbs that you'll buy, not a name brand like Cree or uh, Philips or GE, uh, some off-brand. And you'll notice you buy these LED bulbs and they uh, don't last. You know, they, they say they'll last 20,000 hours. If you're lucky, if you get 1,000 or two hours out of the bulb. And uh, what they're doing is when they make LEDs, blue and red have been made for a very, very long time. So those are going to be your cheapest LEDs you can buy. But the white ones and so far orange ones and stuff like that, those uh, haven't been manufactured as long. But what they do is when they manufacture LEDs, uh, they test them. Those that are out of tolerance get uh, sold off to second-tier vendors. So in other words, when the LED is made, it's checked out, made sure it's quality control. It falls within specs, what it's supposed to. Those are going to be sold to uh, big companies, you know, like Philips or GE or uh, a Kessel or any of your lighting companies that are out there that you name a real expensive light. The odds are those LEDs have been checked, they have passed, and they go at a higher premium. So what what do they what do they do with the rejects, the ones that don't meet spec, the ones that aren't quite there, and the ones that look like they they will not have the shelf life of what they're claiming. Let's say they say it will last for twenty thousand hours. They know it's not going to last. Okay, it doesn't have the quality. So, well, they don't throw those LEDs away and start all over again. They s sell them on the market. Uh, and these LEDs, because they don't come up to spec, and that's what they're using in here. I talked to a, a friend of mine in NASA. I, talk, I saw a video and talked to a friend of mine in NASA, and he said, normally if they don't have a black spot in them or something, they're just out, and you're putting voltage through the LED, it should light up. Like I said, if you've got three volts, you should be able to put a DC current through the LED. Only that LED will light up. And you just keep checking all your LEDs, and you'll find out which one's burnt out. Well, they said, and we all agree, it's cheap LEDs they're buying. Uh, so that keeps the price of this down. If you go out and buy, you know, hundreds of thousands of these defective LED uh, dialed, they're going to wind up uh, not lasting as long because both lamps that I had, both of these lamps, had the same problem. One of the LEDs just quit working. So apparently that is the problem. That's why the fan runs. Uh, it could still light up, but you would have to either jump the LED or you're going to have to put another LED, unsolder that LED and put another LED in that spot. And you can go order LEDs, of course, off the internet, but that means if you replace that LED, you don't know if any more of these LEDs in here are going to wind up burning out. Okay, so that's just 
keep it priced down. Unfortunately, that's what I found out. That brings me to these guys. Anyone who's been watching my channel for a long time will know that if you look back in the archives of me making lights, I used to use a light called uh, uh, a bright light, and that was by GE Bright Lights. And these were great for do-it-yourselfers. Uh, I liked them. They were inexpensive. You're stuck with the color they come with, and that's it. But for the price and the flexibility of the LED that you're getting, the bulb you're getting at the hardware store, it's something you can live with. Not all bulbs are created the same. I'll get into that. But that uh, GE seems to be making some pretty good lights. You can buy other Cree is another one. Uh, C R E E. Uh, there, there's some other brands besides Philips, G E Cree. There's some other brands, but anyhow, name brands is what you have to stay with. Don't go with an off brand. If you look at something you never seen it, don't go with the off brand. One thing that somebody told me too uh, on my channel is uh, for LED lights, they're using uh, aquatic lights. They're not using aquatic lights, but they're using botanic lights for. Uh, 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 if you want a garden and they're using these uh, horticultural lights, you have to go on the internet. And I think one of the lights they showed me was uh, like like a 12 by 12 inch. It's a, that's a good size light. The problem with uh, these lights is they have a lot of LEDs on them. And it, you could probably call it a big, huge cob. The trouble is uh, they may have them wired up like the old... Uh, lights that uh, Fluvo used to make. And I had strip lights now, two strip lights, not the newer strip lights that Fluvo makes, but the older ones that were about 7,500K. I've had it where one or two or three LEDs would just burn out. But the light would still light because that's the way they had it wired up. The light would still light, but you could, you could tell that you have some burnt out LEDs. They were just black and you knew... They didn't last very long. Well, Fluvo, uh, now with their newer lights that are out there, uh, and they've changed to 7,500K to 6,500K, I think, um, they don't seem to be having little LEDs throughout the strip burning out. At least I have not witnessed that with the lights I have bought. And I bought two of them, 24-inch and a 36-inch one that will go on a 36-inch tank. And if you remember, I did a video on strip lights. Now, these lights right here, I'm using a product called um, Ultra Bright by G. I showed that in my video. This is the light bulb. This is what it looks like. It's uh, 4,500K for your luminous output. Now, uh, basically, when you talk about a temperature here of 5,000K is what that light is. Now, that's tricky when someone says daylight. The box says daylight. You can buy these in daylight. It'll say it right up here, daylight. Or you can buy these where they're, uh, I think it's soft white. You want the daylight. Now, the only thing of it is, is you have to watch certain manufacturers because they may turn around and say daylight, and you ever buy a daylight bulb and it has a lot of blue in it? And a lot of people don't, oh, I don't like that. You know, the, because daylight hits between 5,000 to 5,500K, and they claim that's like noon daylight in your aquarium. There was a company, uh, it was a Power Twist, it was a T8, T8 and T5. I think you can get them in lamp. I think it was a T8, if I'm not forget, forgetting. And it was called a Power Twist, and it was a 5500. But it gave a yellowish green cast to the aquariums. I'm talking years ago. This is like back in the late 70s, 80s. To these Power Twists, supposed to give out more light because the the long tube was twisted a little bit and that's supposed to give you more light but anyway they didn't really go over big because the color they gave off wasn't appealing to the eye yes it was great for plants but for the eye it 
it didn't go over because of that. You know, it it just was. Oh, I, I don't like the way the aquarium looks. It, it it's not appealing. But I did notice something that uh, on these Kessel lights, like the 160, for example, they have a little knob. You can turn it from 6,000 K to 9,000 K. Uh, but if you go down to the 6,000 K, it has a yellowish, greeny, greenish look to the to the light in your aquarium. Uh, it looks brighter to the human eye than if you go up to the 9,000 K, it will uh, definitely look, have a bluer cast. And people don't want that. And salt water, yeah. Fresh water, no. We don't want that bluish cast. Plus the fact it's in fresh water, we don't want blue, we want red. So we want the red to spike up and the blue to be down very, very low. As low as we can get it to like maybe 5% or something if you're tuning in your light. The red, you can go up. Blue has to go down in, in fresh water. Um, salt water, you take the red out and put the blue in because basically the fish want the blue. So you would zip the blue up full blast and knock down the red. It's just the opposite. But what this gives off is what they call a white light. Now, I don't mind it. They're, they're, they're non-adjustable, the light bulbs. They're non-dimmable, so whatever brightness they are, you're going to have to live with. It's a non-dimmable light bulb. They also make a uh, grow bulbs too, GE, which is basically uh, a flood lamp. And it will say for flowers, and then one of the bulbs will say for seedlings. Okay, they change the spectrum, tweak it out where you'll have more blue and a lot of red, and the other bulb for flowers will have a lot less blue in it, and it doesn't peak as high in the, in the yellows and greens, but it will peak and spike real high in the red. So, But what we're trying to do in our fish tanks is trying to meet a happy medium and a happy color to our eyes. Okay, so the Ultra Bright gives you uh, that coloring that looks like day. Maybe you may not like it. Some people may say, ah, oh, it looks a little too yellowish. Uh, but that's what it's giving you, daylight, 5,000 K. To the eye, it, it, it will look white. Okay, that's all I can say. It will look white. And because of the, how they got these bulbs set up. That's what it's going to look like to the eye. So when it goes in the fish tank, it, it more has a sun look to it. In other words, if the sun was coming directly in your aquarium, that's what the light is presenting to you is a sun spectrum. And some people may not like that. They may want a little more blue. So these are non-tweakable light bulbs. The ultra brights, they're non-tweakable. So... It is what it is. They, they cost about uh, $25 a piece. I noticed Lowe's has a sale. Sometimes you can catch them on sale. For, you know, sometimes you can buy them for $22, $19. It depends if they, if they go on sale. Uh, if it, they do go on sale, I'll buy more. But anyhow, the fixture. Uh, if this fixture, the Azu fixtures are going to be a glossy uh, black on the outside. They're going to be a little bit wider on, on the bottom. And they're going to be a white porcelain top on the Azu. Uh, you can buy them at any Petco, PetSmart. A lot of them sell it. This particular light, which is also popular is called a Reptizoo. And I've seen Reptizoo lights being sold at uh, different vendors too. Now the Reptizoo is, uh, I think it's a little better quality made. You know, not that the Azu ones aren't, but for example, the light is going to be a little wider on the Azu. Uh, but the difference is in internally. Internally, you got a shiny uh, aluminum where the Azu will have a dull aluminum. In other words, just a brush aluminum 
where this actually has a shiny aluminum interior to help reflect the light out of it. That, that I like better, the shinier, because you get more of that light bouncing off of it. It's the same theory that they use on a lot of lights. And they uh, let's say if you buy an ultraviolet light, it's stainless steel. The inside is shiny to help reflect the ultraviolet rays. Well, that's what they're doing here. It's just a drawn. This is just a, made from a draw die, nothing special. And so is the Azu. Uh, they both have holes on top here, bent holes. The wiring here on this lamp is far, far better than the wiring on the Azus. There's just thinner. Uh, the opening on top here is, is smaller, so you may have to bend it yourself to get it over here. These arms are from uh, the lights, the, the Astolites, the arms are. So I... Not 100% sure if you could buy just the arms by themselves. I think you can. But since these arms are available already, these lights hook on. All you do is unscrew the top bolt, put the light on, and screw it back in, and it holds it. That's it. That's all the work you have to do. And then, of course, tie up your, your cord onto your right here. Tie up your cord with, with little twists which you can buy a package of them at the hardware store. Anyhow, I wanted to show you this, that as you can see, I, now I've done this for years. Now, can you, can you see that? I'll, I'll try to get a better shot of that than, than what I'm getting. 